So the man... Ali can put on, and this really is a shock for the ex-champion when the official champion, Joe Frazier, gets into the ring to receive an award. And that really was a well-kept secret there. And look at these two taking the last waltz there. Muhammad Ali and Boudini Brown, his trainer. And you watch, you'll notice Frazier won't even go over to Ali. He's just bursting his sides with laughter. What a character, this man. How can he do this when he's coming out for a fight? And even the intended victim, Floyd Patterson, there looks amused by it all. Good evening. So that's it. You can get your comfortable ringside seat with us then for Muhammad Ali and Floyd Patterson. And the usual prayer there, the Muslim prayer by Muhammad Ali, he does this before all his fights. They're both wearing white trunks, but I think they're sufficiently well known not to bother with identification. And if you're not too sure, well, the man who's 29 and a half pounds heavier, Muhammad Ali, he's the tall one of the two. So then this is the repeat match they boxed in 1965 when Ali, or then Cassius Clay, was champion of the world and he stopped Patterson in 12 rounds. Patterson's rather proud of the fact that he was still gamely on his feet at the end of that fight and wants to prove that Ali certainly did not carry him. And at 37, physically, doesn't this man Patterson look really extraordinary? 13, six and a, 13, six and a half, he weighs 188 and a half here. Jerry, we're going to go to the other mic. So now we'll find out whether Patterson, in what he describes as a peek-a-boo style, he puts his head between these high gloves, can just duck inside that long left hand this left hand that he uses almost like a Chinese torture there, Ali, to wear down the opposition. I think I'll be a bit surprised if Ali shows too much contempt for Patterson because he does have, whatever else he doesn't have, a good left hook. And that's the punch that had... Ali on the floor in the fights with Sonny Banks, Henry Cooper and Joe Frazier. Just casual flicks as you can see from the big man there. He really is an amazing mover. And at 30, as they say, he isn't getting any younger. So you can really say with these trunks, you're getting it in black and white as well as colour. Now that's the leaping punch you may have to look for there if Patterson can dive in with that left hook, he calls it a gazelle punch, he really leaps off the floor that's the, really the only chance he has of tagging Ali
So at the end of that first round there, it looked to me as though Muhammad Ali had spent up so much energy uh, shouting there at Joe Fraser, who was introduced into the ring before the fight, that he wanted to take it easy a bit in that first round. But I like the look of Patterson at 37. He really is incredible and could dance around quite a bit and not carry any superfluous poundage. But this man doesn't even consider it's worth sitting down at this stage. This is his 40th fight, and of course he's lost only one, and that was to Joe Frazier when he lost the title. Um, when I say lost the title, when he failed to win it back, actually, from Frazier in this ring last March. So round two then, and the research round is over. And Ali just flicking that left hand, but when he decides to put a bit of weight behind it, it, it is a hurtful punch. Now we'll see if Patterson can use these clusters of blows that he used to be famous for, combinations they call them in the American fight game. He puts them together, still fairly rapid, but it's a question of getting near Ali to do it. That's the problem. Well, we had what looked like a re rehearsal there for Patterson's leaping left hook. And there he is trying to work up a bit of steam there, trying to get a bit of tempo. But both extremely relaxed fighters. And uh, you can understand that when you have a man who's been 20 years a professional. Well, he was almost signalling there that he thought that punch was a bit low. Not only does he hurt with this, Ali, he breaks up the concentration of the opponent. That's the name of the game. Keeps him at bay all the time. As Patterson trying to set himself to leap in with that left hook, you notice that Ali's trying to beat him to the punch. Just say, take that, stay out of distance. There it is again. Now you can really see that one coming. Unless Patterson's trying to show Ali that punch and then speed it up when he's least expecting it. Now this is a question now of Ali's defensive skills. He realised he can't take too many liberties with Patterson because the last thing a veteran fighter loses is the power of punch. They get a little slower, but they can still bang a bit. It looked a bit exciting to the bleachers, as they say, the back seaters here, but those punches weren't getting through. He was just brushing past Ali's shoulders with them. So, no, they're not bothering to... So, into round three. Incredible casual look the whole time about Ali. You just can't tell when he's going to start saying, well, now you're going to get it. He's having a look at Patterson, as they say. Patterson, 63 fights, 155, and Ali, this is his 40th fight. So that's the pattern, obviously. If Patterson is going to stand square, 
Ali's going to rip those punches up. But to give it to Patterson, he has all the spirit in the world. He'll come back at him. He did this for 12 rounds in Las Vegas when he had a crippled back and kept going and rather resents the criticisms that Ali was carrying him. Although, to be fair to Ali, he denies that. Still has quite a bit of speed there, Patterson. Obviously at 37, you, nobody can be quite the man they were, but Patterson reckons he's better now than he was at 30 anyway. And I just noticed that he double jabs with the left hand, Patterson, then turns it into a left hook. That's the old formula. When at one time they thought he had the fastest hands in heavyweight history. But now Ali's unloading on him a bit. The research rounds are over. So with a half a minute to go in this round, I can assure you that from ringside, those punches from Ali were not taps at all. He was really getting some weight behind those. An impressive weight it is at 15 stone 8. 6 feet 3 and a half. Well, it's time uh, the old gentleman here, 30 year old now, Muhammad Ali, wanted to sit down. He was standing up between those rounds. So let's have a look at slow motion. So you can see how Patterson winds himself up to leap in. So this is still replay then of the third round. So round four. And it was Patterson who was off his stool first that time and Ali decided he needed to sit down between rounds. And now you can see he's being a little bit of tomfoolery there. Ali getting in, showing his face to Patterson, saying, OK, lead to me and I might counterpunch. This surely is what Jack Johnson did in his heyday, the way he tried to torment the opponents. When do you think that Patterson knocked out Ingham Johansson, he knocked out Henry Cooper, defeated Archie Moore and there he is standing there with Ali really taking liberties with him but one wonders if he just risked that chin out a little too far What an infuriating man Ali must be to fight, to stand there and just goad you into doing something. Now he's winding up that bolo punch, the right hand. You watch this, he'll probably do a, a twist underneath and right through the middle of Patterson's guard. This is almost a repeat, I think, of that Las Vegas fight. 
when Clay, Clay then really punished Patterson, but Patterson was still struggling gamely, rather sickening side in the 12th round. Just pulling a disturbing bandage off of Ali's hands. This happened so frequently in his fights. It happened with Jerry Quarry and with Oscar Bonavina. Of course, you can't get knocked out with a bandage, but it's a bit distracting. It really is Patterson having so much difficulty. What does he do with this fellow? Apart from try to hit him, which he is trying to do. And he looked pretty impressive with that little combination. That was a little like the old Patterson there. So there he is then, the man who went up to 16-2 this year against Mac Foster in Tokyo, but he decided to whip himself back into shape. He was in Detroit for three days last week, winning a court case on points, I think. So he had to have a crash program at uh, the weekend to do 29 rounds of sparring. And Angelo Dundee was saying he might have overdone it a bit. So then, replay into that round. End of the fifth round, and it's scheduled for 12. With its usual toying and taunting stuff from Ali, but occasionally having to take a pretty good whack from Patterson. Both of them former Olympic gold medalist. Both won gold medals at 18 in Helsinki and Rome. Patterson is a middleweight, Ali is a light heavyweight. Although that's one time where the crowd got a little bit excited and who knows, Ali may have been a bit worried there because Patterson got through with the punches. <laughs> Trouble is, these Patterson successes always seem a bit short-lived. You get the feeling that the big fella puts him in his place right away when he takes a liberty or two. So Patterson trapped there in his own corner, but none of the screaming from his seconds can help him. But the crowd is always like a sidestep when the Matador sidesteps the ball. They love that. No doubt about it, you certainly can't knock the physical condition of Patterson. Same weight as in his heyday as the world champion. And he's had 12 world title fights and an additional one for a disputed world championship. And the referee having to keep on his toes even with these big fellas. Arthur McCanty, New York appointed of course. And uh, the usual shouts there from Boudini Brown, one of Ali's seconds. Let's go to war. And the crowd really signal even the half successes by Patterson. They really encourage every flurry of blows that he throws.
And there's one of the gamest men that ever been in a fight game. No doubt about it. You say, well, if you have four million dollars in the bank and you've earned eight million, why do I have to go on fighting? But this is what this man likes and this is what he does best. And he really got through well there, Patterson. And there's the replay then. So the halfway stage, round six then. And as if you didn't know, Muhammad Ali and Floyd Patterson, both former heavyweight champions of the world, and this is the really lively round, it would seem. And there's no larking about here from Ali. There really isn't. He's done the toying and taunting stuff. He's taken a few punches from Patterson, and it looks as though he wants to go to work in the sixth round. Patterson lasted 12 rounds in the last fight. It looks as though he's going to be lucky to do it here. But that's what Ali gets for mixing it now. By coming to fight like that certainly would suit Patterson. He's lacking the height and having to have this 29 and a half pounds disadvantage as well. And when Ali comes to him, he has more chance with the counter punches. Some damage around Patterson's left eye now. You just see him thumbing a bit of blood away there. And it obviously came from that flurry of punches because there's been no illegal head work at all. Well, this really is a punch-up in this round. And he keeps trying that big looping right hand there, Ali. Sets his opponent up with the left hand. There it is again. And then tries to chop down with a right hand punch. <coughs> sort of a ripping blow that Ali uses. That's how he twice cut Henry Cooper in their fights. thing is, when it comes to spirit and gameness, you can count on Floyd Patterson. Even though that blood now dripping from that right eye. And it's Ali taking him apart now. With half a minute to go in the sixth round. But if Patterson gets back to the corner and gets a bit of revival, who knows? He may go on a bit longer than this. But this is where Ali's trying to make every punch count now. There was no real big betting in this fight and you can understand why. So now here's the corner men. This is where many fights, of course, are won and lost in the corner. They're applying this ice pack round Patterson's face there. It can't be too badly cut because they don't seem to be using the adrenaline pads on it. But there's a fellow who's really taken a battering in that sixth round. An absolute dollar millionaire, but still... So you can see now that this left eye of Patterson's really is closing in the seventh round. It really is looking a bit grotesque there. And it, although that was a low punch, he actually slipped as he threw that punch. So you may get an apologetic uh, touch there from Patterson. But this uh, armistice will be very short-lived, I think. 
I haven't seen Patterson damaged like this in any of his fights. He was down 16 times in his two reigns as champion, but he really is being taken apart now. It's becoming a pitiful sight to see such a great fellow and at one time a great champion like this. And the referee warning Ali for pulling Patterson on. But unless Patterson now gets lucky and gets a bit desperate and tries to throw a punch, he really has no chance. I would have thought, obviously, that Patterson has trouble seeing these punches coming. It's bad enough to get out of the way of Ali's fast hitting when you've got two good eyes, but when one is closing, that really is trouble. And it's swelling fast, this injury. I really, I'll be surprised if it goes longer than this round. The referee may leave it to the end of the round. He may let the seconds have another look at it and call the doctor. And that is the desperation stuff now from Patterson. As you would expect, it's more of instinctive retaliation. Well, he still has the pride of not having been knocked off his feet. I'm wondering now whether this really is the last time we shall see Floyd Patterson in a ring. And I think, I suspect there's a little bit of compassion comes there with Ali. He's not, he's not really turning it all on. But on the other hand, he might be doing Patterson a favour if he does. Less than half a minute. So with half a minute to go then, this is the effort now from Ali. I think he wants to take Patterson out. There's no point in him really turning on this brutal punishment. And he's bleeding quite heavily now, and the eyes swelling. And it looks, yes, the doctor's coming up now, and it looks to me as though he cannot allow this very game man to go on in this one-sided fight now. Dr. Edwin Campbell, New York State Athletic Commission there, up in the corner by our commentary position. And I really can't see how he can let this go on. But there you are, the doctor's far more qualified than I am to make that decision. But he's already asking Patterson how he feels about it. Well, obviously, knowing the pride of Patterson, he's not going to quit unless he has to. It's a tense moment now, and Ali's corner looking over to say what is happening. But it looks as though they're going to send him out for the eighth round. No, the referee quite rightly refuses to let this go on. And it just shows you how ignorant can the crowd get. They're quite upset that the referee has stopped this at the start of the eighth round. But I am entirely in agreement with the referee and doctor's opinion there. It really is a bad eye. It was a one-sided battle and one of the great fighters of our time shouldn't be humiliated any farther. So now we'll try and have a word with both winner and loser. It's okay, I didn't get permission. One of these guys recognizes me. Can I get him, fellas? Thanks.